Hello YouTubers, welcome to Scorpion Venom Studio Games. In this video I will be showing you Sketchfab library of 3D meshes that I will be using for my landscape of the ocean, which is going to be my corals. And I would like to introduce you to, to one of the artists that I've been following. And her name is Lauren Ollinger. And she has over 60 different corals that can be used for game development and they're all free to be used if you look at the top it said 60 models and in this video it's not a tutorial or any sort this is just an overview of all the 30 models that she has and that i'm going to be downloading and using now one thing you've noticed is that some of the models are missing a little bit of texture in certain spots of the model and uh, that being said it's not a big deal the other thing i would want to notice as well is that the triangulation and vertices are ridiculously high so we have over 1 million triangulations just on this model itself and again some people might get uh, you know pushed away with this and uh, not want to use it but I would suggest rethinking it because it can be used as free model it says copy and distribution material in any medium or format and remix transform and build to whatever you're liking right so it has over 1.4 million triangulations can be used for unity uh, godot unreal engine and other augmented realities virtual reality platforms so there's a lot of different usage that you can use it for now one thing to keep in mind is that i will be downloading this project either in fbx or obj format and in this case in there they're all obj and I'm not too concerned about the file size right now, nor about the triangulations of the items. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and name it Corals. And it's going to be used for all the corals that I'm downloading currently for this particular project. But again, it's 169 to almost 170 megabytes for the file. And again, that is because there's other files in there. And the biggest one is the obj file itself and of course that is because of the size of the project and again like i said i'm not too concerned about it because you can always reduce the amount of vertices and faces using blender and this is going to be the steps that i'll be taking in the future it's not going to be in this video again this is just simply for demonstration purposes of each individual model that i'm going to be exploring and they're all different variations of shape and sizes and colors. Now, some of them might be similar to one another. There's another Varangula Gigantea for the coral. And this is the type one compared to the type two. They're pretty much similar, but a little bit different. And again, I will be using all of them. And there's another one, Varangula gigantia and this one has a little bit less of triangulation and, and vertices but again i will be reducing that by about a thousand so by that time it reduced it's around nine thousand vertices or triangulations so it's not going to be too big and what i'll be using is the foliage tool to populate the world with them and the spots that are missing the texture, I will be either hand painting them over or I will be adding smaller corals on top of it to blend them in. So, you know, here we go. I'll just give you an idea on what you can do with these, uh, even though it's missing some textures. And most of them are only the bottom parts, which is totally fine because I can spawn them lower to their ground. So you're already solving the problem by not worrying about the bottom of the mesh to be filled in. And think about this, you're saving a lot of time by utilizing somebody else's work for your game development or a scene, you know, it could be a game design scene, could be a school project, you name it. And I think a lot of people are not utilizing these materials is because as some of them you see can have small holes just like this or textures are a little bit out of the you know way and they're a little bit stretchy or missing colors, which again, you can always improvise and add more corals to it you can always put it in a way that it's sunk into the ocean part so there's different ways of doing it and again i'm going to be trying different ways of utilizing that this one's very interesting this one has a hole going all the way through it which is very strange but again uh, i like 
seeing very odd corals because in reality they're all different in size and shapes and I will do my best to find as many as I can on the Sketchfab not only that is provided by this artist but other ones as well so that way you can guys see the names and copy them yourself and then go online and find them if you want to use them and again I'm not too concerned about the sizes because that can be changed once I import this into the blender and then I'll do my best to keep the model looking the same and maybe even add a different amount of LODs in the future as well and I think what I'll do is I'll dedicate a video to each individual model itself so that way if you want to download that specific model you can go into my playlist and watch each video regarding that project and you will see them in the game in the future as well I already have lots of different corals that I personally purchased but again some of them are not as realistic as, as those and of course the shapes of them and sizes are not even close to what Unreal Engine provides and like I've mentioned before there are certain spots right here that you can see that uh, the texture is being stretched out and things like that and you can either unwrap the UVs but again this one doesn't even come with any of that stuff except for one single texture so I'm not 100% sure how would that be done. Some of them are very strange shapes, but again, I like to see the challenge of what I can do with this and let the creativity take over and see what I can come up with. Because not only that you can add coral it, but you can always add some stone pieces around it and then make it look like it's just sitting on top of the stone and then not even worry about these textures that are missing on some of this projects and some of these 3D models. So I always keep that in mind. And again, once I get this into the world, uh, once I reduce the size of the vertices and triangulations, i got to make sure that the cooling for all the 3D meshes, which is, if you're unfamiliar with it, the cooling is used for rendering certain meshes at a specific distance. So that way it doesn't render through the entire level. If you're, let's say, on the island somewhere walking around, there's absolutely no reason for it to render any corals in the ocean because you're not even currently there. But once you start swimming and seeing all this stuff, you'll be able to uh, render it as the player approaches a specific distance for a particular mesh or a structure. So in this case scenario, those are small textures and meshes that can be used and the rendering is going to be much closer than let's say a, a huge tower or a building and then my scenario is going to be py egyptian pyramids for the egyptian city let's say that's going to be on the island in the jungles you know something like that will have to get rendered far little away since you'll be able to see that probably somewhere from the top of the mountain but uh, once you reach over the mountain you won't be able to see that so things like that you got to keep in mind and t test certain things out before you know m making the definite distance for co the calling so again and there are so many different ways of trying to improvise and say for the performance as well when you create video games so i'm not too concerned about the size of these corals i'm just happy the fact that there's a lot of people out there in the world like this individual like lauren that can actually provide with all these different content that can be used again it's just a matter of understanding how some of the stuff works knowing a little bit more about the engine, knowing about more about 3D softwares and just being creative, you know. And the fact that some of the stuff can be used for recreational purposes is uh, another plus. One thing I also like is that a lot of these corals have holes in them, which means it can be used to provide shelter for the fish or maybe even set up in a way where I don't know if you've ever seen, but sometimes there is natural gases that come out from the corals that produce also, I believe, oxygen. Uh, I'll have to double check that, but I've seen in uh, some of the TV shows on Netflix and things like that where they sh they've shown how the air bubbles coming off of these corals that not only create life around the corals, but also was thinking of utilizing that concept from, uh, what was the name of the game? Uh, there was not the game that came out not long ago on Steam, 
where you could swim underwater and a uh, subnautica here we go and then where you could like swim to the corals and then catch some air uh, and then be able to continue swimming underwater farther so i think it's a pretty cool concept and idea i do have uh, bubble particles already from one of the unreal engine projects so i would like to set that up as an example and show you at the end of this video as well but that's obviously the idea was from the Subnautica and I thought maybe I can even add that to the game too. I mean, why not? That would be pretty cool. And again, I mean, some of them are not going to produce too much of the bubble. Some of them that will. And it will just, you know, create a uh, different environment and make the game less boring, I think. And then being able to populate the world with these different corals is going to be fun. And if you're not familiar on how I'm going to do this yet, or maybe you already have an idea, I'm going to be using the foliage box tool to do that. I'm not even going to use the foliage tool to populate the world because that's just not going to work out for such a huge landscape. I will be using a uh, tool that is actually in within Unreal Engine that you'll have to enable. And then I'm going to create a, uh, a box that's going to be sitting on top of the landscape and is going to generate all these corals. But first, I'm going to use a tool that's called prefabricator you can actually get that from marketplace as well and i will be able to grab some of these materials and different meshes and combine them with different rocks and then randomize it so that way i can create a different variations of these not necessarily corals but corals sitting on top of different rocks and that way it will create a different variety of possibilities for my game and I won't have to sit there and add every single coral individually. I'll have to do that in the beginning of the process but once it's all done I should be alright and it looks like I'm coming to an end with her project. Okay so I have found a couple more corals from other artists and the Hydros is one of them. I found that they have a couple that can be used. Now this example right here, I can't really use that. And also I want to show you real quick what you got to watch out for. So when you look at something like this, it says non-commercial. Make sure you don't use that for commercial purposes. I'm just letting you guys know ahead of time. So that way you guys don't get in trouble for using non-commercial for commercial purposes. Just avoid that. And it looks like the rest of them are non-commercial. So this one is. And this one is done by Nikolai 9 and mouth fidan chin chow 333 i hope i said that name correctly another pretty cool coral has been done by another artist so you can always follow them or you can just search for a particular model that you're looking for and i'm going to give you a quick demonstration of what i was talking about using corals with the bubble effect underwater what i'm going to do is go to my ocean folder and to my corals meshes and I'm going to use one of those single meshes for demonstration purposes so we'll have a coral right here that's let's say if it's sitting underwater and this model was purchased from marketplace so let's say this is something that's going to look like this underwater and then let's put a couple more in the ground just for fun and again, of course, it's not going to look like this at all. This is just uh, giving you an example of samples of what I already have. And I will show you how you can create different texture colors with it as well to give a variation in colors. And then I'm going to set them together as one piece and then hopefully create more different variations of different corals to kind of randomize it and see what we can come up with. So let's pretend that these are of course it has to save the project as usual okay so this is just an example of the corals that i have I'm not going to go too much into details with all the different kinds that since it's not the purpose of it but here is my bubbles Let's see um bubbles yeah i have sound i have quite a lot of sound effects too but what I'm looking for is my PS bubbles and I'm going to drop them right in here and eventually I'm going to combine them together so when I spawn this item it actually will 
come with the bubble effect as well, but it's not going to be done through static mesh. It'll have to be set up a little bit differently. And I'm going to scale this just a little bit smaller, so it looks like it's coming from the inside of the coral. There we go, just like that. Okay, and then now if you're to swim underwater, I'm going to give a quick demonstration. Now again, these bubbles are moving quite fast, so I can always go into the effect itself and reduce how quickly it moves. Oh, you know what, I forgot to, um, one thing I got to do is I got to turn off the auto pawn on my character from the previous video that I had. Here we go, auto possess. It's called auto possess. So I'm going to disable that so that I can play just the camera view from where I'm at right now. I had a previous tutorial regarding the whole creation. Let's turn that off. And so let's say you're swimming somewhere underwater and you're coming across these corals. And there you have it. You have bubbles coming up. And then, like I was saying, like you'll be able to swim up to it and maybe catch some breath if it was to be uh, oxygen or something like that, unless it was just regular gases. But well, I've noticed as well that underwater it creates this outline in black. Again, if anybody knows uh, what that is and how to fix it, I think, I, again, I'm going to still have to look through the blueprint of the ocean and everything else. I think it's under the settings there that it's doing that and i'll play around more with it and see what i can do with it of course i'll fix that in the future it's just i don't have time to look into all of these details at the moment i'm just trying to create all these other stuff and then go back to it and change it the other thing i've noticed is that this water is kind of stretching certain meshes in and out which is pretty cool uh, it seems like it's something that would happen in real life too like when you would swim underwater but uh, yeah, here's a quick concept of what it would look like if it was underwater with the corals. And I cannot wait to show you guys uh, the possibilities of Unreal Engine and how many different shapes and sizes that you can create. And it's just mind-blowing. And that being said, I'm going to end the video on this. And as always, if you stay till the end of the video, I want to thank everybody for watching my YouTube channel. Thank you for all the subscriptions, and don't forget to like the video if you like the content that I've uploaded regarding free 3D models of the corals. And uh, don't forget to leave a comment if you have any suggestions of what else should I uh, look for on Sketchfab for 3D models to implement into my game as well. And then click that notification bell button to be notified every time I upload a video in regarding game development and content that can be either purchased on Marketplace or online. Until next video, guys.